trinket, eh? Show me, show me not. I can't be healthy. Ow, it's burning. Call the doctor. Welcome to the video. Saw him like a little tired, but we here. First leg day of the week was for our Black Friday shoot, so things don't always go perfectly. New body weight average is 199. Feeling skinny and tired. Weather's cold. Stress is high. Legs still need to be built. So I'm gonna go grab the slam board, I think. Probably safety squat bar, start that bitch out. Welcome to the video, man. Legion subs, <laughs> company. Save you 20%, man. And all Black Friday, if you get it done, you get uh, bonus points when you use our code, but you also get like 50% off. So you buy one, get one 50% off, check it out. 3sb.co, you know where it goes. This new hoodie set's coming soon, but can't see that yet. You'll, you can like view it, but we're not gonna talk about it, but you could like view it or something. Drink your water, go for a walk, call your mother, stop being a lazy bitch, go get it. Bulgarian weightlifting, y'all don't know, man. You throw the wraps outside on the sweats on top. That's when you're lifting weights, man. Talk about like stress being one battery that we have, right? That comes from your personal life. Oh, y'all dating some toxic folks. Your business life. You're working a job you don't want with the boss you don't want. Plus, you're not giving your best effort there. We always got to look in the mirror. Why is our relationship toxic? Half of that's your shit. You chose that person. You chose the situation. Why is my boss and job shit? Look at yourself. See what tasks you're doing or not doing. And we have everything else that comes with it. So for myself, there's actually a really good quote we'll read later about Dr. Eric Holmes, but kind of folds into it. It's not the exact same, but basically, you know, like decision fatigue and general fatigue. Training is just a part of my lifestyle, so it's not a huge deal, but people ask about working out and how I feel or how I stay motivated, and I just say, oh, I just do it. That doesn't mean I don't want to enjoy it. I would love to go to bed dreaming about which tricep activation exercise I'm about to do the next day. I've literally had people talk to me like that, like, man, you don't go to bed like thinking about training and your programming and all like, bro, maybe in the first six months of training, I had that honeymoon phase. And that's when I was like 17. So we're literally looking at over 18 years ago. Cause I've been literally training longer than some of you have been alive. Some of our members have been alive. I want to wake up and be stoked about it, but I'm not. I want to be able to be a tough guy, hit some ammonia and get this done. But None of that is what I want to do right now, right? We've been shooting all week. Subhas behind the camera has been working his tail off. We've been shooting Black Friday content, getting the Black Friday, which y'all maybe don't know too. I think a lot of people see or know that I have a following and automatically think like I'm some billionaire that has 80 employees. Man, our team's maybe 10 deep at max. And so like homie behind the camera and me are basically running a full apparel company. Inventory, website meetings, creative meetings, designing the next whole year i got a whole four quarters of 2024 i got to design let alone get ready for the biggest launch of our life so the content everything's just draining man we're tired sleep's been whatever it's starting to get cold out and y'all know i love the heat i love living in the cold but i love training in the heat so you should you know i don't want to say you can get by with the minimum but you get by and sometimes like in work and in training, like, is good enough. What's good enough? And so today we'll do what's good enough. I'll try to get done what's good enough. Change your life, you dumb nerds. Go to bed the exact same time, wake up the exact same time for six months. Drink half your body weight in ounces of water for six months. Six months. That's it, man. If you can't do something for six months, go ahead and unsubscribe, leave here. You're in the wrong channel. Man, the amount of kids I see bullshitting their accessories. Expect to be a fucking IPF champion one day. Good luck. I'm old, retired, still go harder than you, and have zero goals. But if you're gonna do something, I might as well do it correctly. Spinning my wheels is one of the most annoying things in my life. I'm not even motivated by winning, I'm not motivated by not losing, I'm motivated by wasting goddamn time. A lot of y'all wasting your damn time. Put your grown man pants on, pussies. Dr. Eric Helms, one of the OGs. Congratulations on your pro card. He just won a couple weeks ago. Um, but one of the wisest guys I've ever been lucky enough to call a friend. He says, relationships don't last when partners don't accept one another's growth. People change. So relationships must change. Relationships with sports and activities are the same thing. Many athletes deny feelings, thoughts about their change with their relationship with their sport, afraid that doing so will hurt competitiveness or motivation. 
In reality, this denial causes the same resentment leading to divorce or in sport, burnout. Have the courage and faith to reflect and grow and you might be surprised in the positive outcome. Now I think you interpret that a lot of ways, right? Like if that was just one stated fact, there'd be no such thing as divorce. There'd be no such thing as burnout in sport or not having a passion for a sport anymore. But to me, it all whittles down to self-awareness, especially when you're talking about a sport. It matters when you have a relationship, you know, who's gonna talk to a 35 year old single dude about a relationship, but I'm a wise man. But in sport, it's literally you and an inanimate object, right? This hypothetical philosophical sport with these boundaries and rules that we made up. Your feeling for it, kind of like I mentioned before, waking up, dreaming about your tricep kickbacks, going to bed, thinking about your bench press loads and weights, your posing routine, your honeymoon phase of that, lifting, fantasizing about what pre-workout you're about to snort, your favorite PR song, turn it on little Yachty to bench press 135 for five, all those things are gonna disappear and you're gonna wake up not even thinking about the gym. You're gonna have to force yourself to schedule it in the gym. You're going to fall out of love when your wrist starts to hurt when you're bench pressing for the next six years what warm-ups feel like and how much they have to change and almost overtake some of your workout as you get aches and pains, injuries, speed bumps along the road, life happens, you have a kid and you still wanna be a competitive power lifter. You have debt, you have someone in your family, I hope not, that may get sick and you may have to help them. Someone important or integral part of your life dies or leaves or passes away, now what are you gonna do? What gaps are you gonna fill? How does that affect your relationship with this activity that you you know, so romanticized in your brain of bodybuilding and powerlifting. All that really comes down to, again, is that mirror, what I look like in myself and how I can adjust around it. So for me, again, this is like taking a shower. This is like wiping my butt after you poopy. It's just things I have to get done. Am I stoked every day? No. Am I stoked one in a hundred days? Maybe. Might be a kid. Another jamming, man. Vlogs are up. So check the new channel. Appreciate it a lot. Link in the bio. Hopefully on the screen somewhere. 3sb.co, goodcompanyapparel.com, November 20. Hot shit coming. Appreciate you guys, man. We over me, be a part of something bigger, so. So I'm Mike. Catch you in the next one.